were talking the ad break, and Denon raised some uh, very, very good points. We'll start with Lockyer. What did you say about Darren Lockyer positionally? I said that he is essentially the only player that you could, like, genuinely have the argument yep. he's the greatest of all time in two positions. Now, yes. there are other players that were good in other positions, but they have, like, one of their positions. That's the key. Whereas Lockyer... If someone said he was a better fullback than Billy Slater, I think people go, "That's I disagree, but it's a reasonable opinion. Yes. If someone said he's the greatest six of all time, I think a lot of people go, yeah, I can see that too. Whereas we were just talking about some other players, and although they won Dalian positions in other positions, yes. we wouldn't consider them in the greatest of all time in that position. No. And then, then, stuff you miss, shop big brand fragrances at lower prices right now with the Chemist Warehouse fragrance frenzy sale. Then you said, then we're starting to think about, well, Okay, how many positional awards did he get? He got six. And then we said, okay, how many did Billy Slater get? He got three fullbacks. Is that right? Three. And, and, and that's that's huge. So he got three fullbacks. Lockyer also got three. And then we said, righto, how many did Cameron Smith get? And the answer was what, Brooks? <laughs> Nine. Hook Nine of the hook years. of the year. And then to which you said, Dennett, in the break, you said, what about Cameron Smith? Cameron Smith is the only player in his position where it's undisputed he is the greatest of all time. Yes. There is no one... We reasonably, reasonably would say that someone else is the greatest ever hooker. No, no. Whereas you would argue at seven, you know, you'd argue Joey or Thurston or uh, Sterling. Like you could argue that, and then at six, you've got plenty as well. You have got Freddie Fitler, you've got Darren Lockyer, yeah, Laurie Dale, all, all these all people. That. Every other position, there's an argument as to who is the goat. In at Cameron Smith at number nine, there's no argument. No. So if if similar to the NFL and how they vote for the MVP, if you put every player right now in the history of the game to the uh, well, not the MVP, but the immortal for their position, he would get 90% plus, wouldn't he, Cameron Smith? He, he would get the highest score of any position. I think that's oh, what you're saying. Easily, 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 I reckon, easily. yeah. Longevity-wise, like he's won nine, nine hooker of the year, so he's polling well in at least nine seasons. Yeah. And he did it in a dominant side with other superstars dominant as well. Side. So it's not like he did it in, a, like, you know... If you were to make an argument against Thurston's Dally M, yes. you could say the side he was in didn't have as many absolute superstars in that's, it. That's correct, yep. Whereas the Storm, you've got the big three. You've Slater, yep. then you've got guys like Israel Flair, Greg Inglis, and he did it. So he was managing to pull votes. Uh, ironically, it's the one knock on Darren Lockyer, and that the knock was he never won a Dally M because a lot of people were stealing votes for him because the Broncos used to be so stacked with stars yes. in it. Okay, just on the Dally M's, boys, and... and I, I really think how big this game is now, and hear me out, why do we not have this? How do we not know who has in the, And I know the scoring has changed in the last 12 months. But why do we not know which player has accumulated the most votes in the history of their game? And why do we not know which player in the history of the game has had the biggest average per game? So there might be a player who we haven't even thought about. Mate, Benji Marshall was quite often up the top. Robbie Farrell was quite often up the top. Why don't we have a, you know, Den and Kemp averages 1.3 per game, which is a big number. Mm. Well, why don't we know that? Why can't we have that? Well, the fun thing with that as well is you could look at it and go, well, someone, you can win a Dally M each decade. The yeah. Dally M oh. player of the decade <laughs> yes. is the most That's points right. each decade. That's right. Well, we, we played golf <laughs> today, Kempy, and, and this, this, is, uh, this will never happen, but it, it probably should, but it'll never happen. We, we play golf today, and you can score par at 10 different courses. But the slope rating and the course rating plays a part. People win Dally M's by just beating up on the mm. the bottom ten teams. That, yeah. that that can be enough to win you the Dally M's, yeah. can't yeah. it? Yeah, for sure. I I think we need to rethink the Dally M system a little bit. Yeah. Um, especially with this whole six point now, because you can just bank together ten big wins and get sixty points. Yeah. Uh, I also think that again, when you look at guys like Darren Lockyer, like the fact that he never won a Dally M, it's just like. How does that make sense? How does it make sense? Yep. So I don't know how you do it, though. Do you go and give a rating to each player every game? Do you, like, hire someone specifically? No, the problem with that, that that's the old rugby league week rating. Yeah. The problem with that is that you, if you miss one or two games, you're cooked. Yeah, okay. You know, so Blake Braley played every game last year. He would be just about winning it. And he had a great season, mind you. So you're back in that, – that would almost be the most consistent player of the year rather right. than that's the right. best player of that's the year. Right. Unless you top their, if, mm. Unless you took their top 12 scores. Yeah, um, th there is another way to do it. There is another way to do it. It is the Trade Hour. Relax with Blue Star Air Conditioning because the perfect home starts with comfort. Bluestarac.com.au. Text, text line here, firing up. 
Sorry, Mr. Kemp. I believe Danny Badiris will always be my favourite hooker. Smith never <laughs> bruised anyone with tackle. See, you didn't even have the guts to no. say the best hooker. You just no. said favourite hooker because you know, you know. <laughs> look, I, hey, I love Danny Badiris. I love Danny That's Badiris. Right. I just, I think Smithy is out and out the greatest. Brett Kenny, four and six, says uh, Smithy the ill, no bias there. Joel and Kempy, do you think it's fair that players who play for Papua New Guinea base club won't pay any tax? That technically doubles PNG club's salary cap. UD. I think it's fair, UD, until it's not fair. <laughs> if if P and G start winning every comp, then it's not fair. But until such time as they have success, I think I think it is fair. And, I, and then, like, you have to ask yourself, okay, well, is the salary cap already really as fair as we that's like right. to imagine? Now, that does, granted, that's a slippery slope, and you go, well, if it's not fair now, then let's just bloody blow the gates open. Yep. But I think that if we want to grow the game, imagine having a whole country. Like, we've got to be willing to sacrifice certain things to grow the game. Like. The, 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 this isn't just a sport where we're looking at the most even playing field ever. It's a business. Yes. So there's two, there's different priorities pulling in different directions. And I just think with this, I agree with you. It's fair until it's not. If they if they roll around and all of a sudden they're winning, you know, they turn into the Penrith Panthers in five That's years right. and they've then, won then it's every, not fair. Then you go, okay, let's start reducing the incentives. Um, but I think that you have to weigh up the growth of the game with fairness. Yes. And you have to go, okay, what's what's more important? PNG, the growth of the game. Yeah, they get a little bit of a leg up, but they finish tenth that this year. That's not really going to affect anyone negatively. Then it's then it's worth it. That's right. And I, and you know what? At the end of the day, all the CEOs have got to buy into it anyway, and I think they will. And a lot of leagues around the world help expansion teams, whether it's an expansion draft to build your team or give the rookie draft, give them one of the higher picks. You've got the cost of living allowance in the AFL too to help Sydney based teams. Well, even didn't didn't so, uh, they get extra salary cap too? The uh, Sydney Giants. Western Sydney Giants. Yes, and the, they, and the originally they did, yeah. and they got a heap yeah. of picks as well. So you want, if you're going to put money into an area and a country in this regard, you want to see some success there. It doesn't matter. Like I will say as well, I think we've been a bit um, bamboozled by the success of the Dolphins. Like I think everyone goes, oh yeah, it's easy to start a club. Yeah. Like look how good the Dolphins are going. No, no, no. The only reason the Dolphins went really well is got the greatest coach of all time. Yep. And they've got a club that has been around for like 100 years with massive resources. They're actually the second richest club in the competition, I'm pretty sure. Huge cash resources. Um, They've got a massive junior base. Arguably, their junior base is actually stronger than the Broncos' junior base. Is right? Well, their junior base is all the way down. And they've had it for like that for years. When I was coming through playing reserve grade for the Broncos, the Clydesdales, their just normal Queensland Cup team would beat us sometimes. Wow. (laughs) And win the comp. Like and it wasn't like oh 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 how crazy the Dolphins beat us this oh, not the Dolphins yeah the Redcliffe Dolphins they beat us this week it'd be like no they're one of the best teams like wow. that's how good their junior base is is that they could enter a team into the Queensland Cup and beat us matter of fact their junior base is so good guess who the two feeder teams were the Queensland Cup Grand Final this year is that right the Redcliffe Dolphins wow okay and so we we look at that and go oh you know starting a new club is really easy. It's it's trust me. They yeah. need a little bit of a leg up. If anything, the Dolphins got unfairly. They needed more help. And you you actually speak to the people at the Dolphins, and you talk about when they did start. They you know, they'd probably tell you that they probably didn't get as much help as they think they should have got. And so I just think with PNG, absolutely you should be giving them. Are more you help. pro Perth? As we get we got to go to the news shortly. But are you, are you pro Perth? I'm pro. We have to grow. Yep. If you're not growing, <laughs> pro on the go. <laughs> pro on I'm the pro go. Grow. I'm pro go because if you're not growing, you're shrinking. There's no, no, there's no in the middle. You can't just you know paddle water for the rest of your life. So I think we, yeah, I'm pro Perth. It's uh, the run home show. Pro on the go. Myself and Denon. News on the go. Let's go that. <laughs>